Okay. So today we'll talk on solution of triangle. Second last topic in your NMAS chapter. Topic kedua terakhir. That we will cover lah. Ah guys, one more thing ah. Untuk NMAS, nak saya ajar ke form 5, bab 7 and bab 8? I want to ask first, majority here. Do you want me to teach linear programming and kinematic or not? The one ah? Really the one? I think two is enough, right, for section C. Unless solution of triangle keluar susah lah. Okay, if penyelesaian segi tiga keluar susah SPM, then you must have satu backup beside index number. One more question. Okay, solution of triangle keluar susah maksud saya adalah bentuk tiga D saja. If if solution of triangle come out 3D, it's always a kebat. Okay, selalu kebat kalau keluar uh, bentuk tiga D lah. Kalau 2D, tak ada masalah. Okay, shouldn't be that easy. Yeah, correct. Yeah, correct also. So it depends lah. If solution of triangle come out 2D, maksudnya tak susah sangat lah untuk kamu. Okay, so never mind. We still talk about this chapter first. Okay, so I'll go through briefly lah secara pintas. Sangat cepat sebab bab ni sangat pendek. Okay, very short chapter. Okay, solution of triangle. Basically, this chapter divided to three parts. Dia dibahagi kepada tiga bahagian. First bahagian, you must know how to use sine rule, pertua sinus. Am I right, guys? Sine rule. So, can anyone recall for me what is the formula for sine rule? Apa rumus yang kita guna, guys, untuk pertua sinus? Boleh tulis sikit? Okay, correct. That's the main idea I want to see. Okay. A over sine A equal to B over sine B. Dia akan ada satu lagi tau, guys. C over sine C. Okay, mengapa ada tiga kat sini guys? Can anyone tell me? Why does the formula have three component? Mengapa ada tiga bahagian kepada formula di sini? Why is there three part? Yes, correct. Three side of a triangle and three angle. Okay, very good. Okay, so basically kamu tak perlu guna semua ni. You don't need to use everything. Hanya pilih dua sahaja. Okay, this is formula arm. Itu sebab mereka tulis semua. This is general formula. Okay, that's why they write three part. But in exam, just use two part enough. Okay. But is this the only way the formula is, guys? Adakah ini bentuk tetap untuk rumus ni sahaja? No. Okay. There is another way you can write also. Okay. You can write it terbalik. Opposite. Something like this. Kedua-dua akan beri jawapan sama. Both of these should give you the same answer. Okay. Basically lah, secara ringkas. This one is talking about the ratio of side to angle. Dia bincang pasal nisbah antara sisi kepada sudut. Do you guys get me? Is the ratio of side to angle. Ratio maksudnya bahagi. Nisbah selalunya maksudnya bahagi. Itu sebab nisbah sisi kepada sudut. Okay? If this one, untuk yang kedua, is the ratio of angle to side. Okay? Nisbah sudut kepada sisi. Opposite lah. Bertentangan antara satu sama lain. Okay, anything you can use. Alright, plus under design rule, mereka ajar kamu sesuatu which is ambiguous case. Am I right guys? Case per ambiguity. Do anyone have trouble to understand this one? I know banyak tak suka bahagian ni. Do you all have any trouble about ambiguous case? Sebab soalan juga suka tanya. They like to ask at the bottom part there, format usually ambiguous case. Empat markah mereka akan uji kamu tentang yang ni. Always they will ask you to sketch a triangle. Laka satu, segi tiga. What is that? Ah? Don't scare me. Ah. If you do enough exercise, you should know what is ambiguous case. Selalu keluar section C kertas dua, solution of triangle. Okay, ambiguous case is one of the part under the question. Salah satu bahagian. Okay, yeah, correct. Case by ambiguity. Alright? So, yeah, this one you must know. Lah. Okay, later I will explain to you all in detail. This one just... Uh, basic one only overview okay second thing you all must know second part of the chapter correct cosine rule pertua cosinus okay guys can you all recall for me cosine rule formula pertua cosinus can you type out the general form how it look like macam mana bentuk am dia nampak can anyone type out I know this is given lah in the formula sheet. Semua for rumus ni diberi. So, jangan risau. Okay? Okay, good. Make sure you guys remember. Okay, A square equals to B square plus C square. 
माइनस टू बी सी कॉस ए दिस इज द जेनरल फॉर्म्यूला वोमोस आम फॉर कॉस साइन वो पत्वा कॉसिनोस ओके द थर्ड पार्ट गाइस व्हाट इज द थर्ड थिंग यू ऑल लर्न इन दिस चैप्टर आप बाग्यान यंग कतीगा यंग कमो ब्लाजा व्हाट यू ऑल लर्न हियर लास्ट पार्ट ओके अनदर थिंग बिसाइड हेवेंस लॉ यस एरिया ऑफ ट्रायंगल माचा माना ना केवा वोमोस सगीतीगा वोमोस लुआस सगीतीगा एरिया ऑफ ट्रायंगल दिस वन यू कैन से कम अंडर हेवेन आल्सो ला Okay, so what is the formula for area of triangle, guys? I'm calling basic. Okay, half AB sine C. Can anyone tell me who must have it? What is the formula for have it? Anyone? A lot of people don't know this, ah. Huh? Who must have it? But it's very useful. Okay, sangat berguna. So anyone remember? Um, how come you lack a bit? Ah, uh, no. First thing, ah, uh, guys. You must find the semi-perimeter, okay? S equal to a plus b plus c over two. Do you guys remember this? Must I ingat? Okay, Andy, correct. Don't forget square root. Ah, kunci kuasa dua jawapan kamu. Okay, Heaven's formula is like this: square root s s minus a s minus b s minus c. Guys, saya nak tanya, a b dan c ni mewakili apa? What does a b and c represent? In Heaven's formula, yes, the sides. Okay, segi ah uh, sisi setiap segi tiga. Okay, yeah, correct. It can be random. Kamu boleh letak mana mana sisi kat A, B dan C. You can put it anywhere under A, B, C because it's S minus the answer, and it's times in the middle. Tiga darab dua, dua darab tiga. Is it the same answer, guys? Sama kan? So that's why kamu tak perlu risau mana nak letak A, B dan C tu. It can be anywhere. All right, but make sure your semi-perimeter kamu betul lah. Kamu kena kira dengan betul. You must count the semi-perimeter right. Then only you will get the right answer. Okay, guys. So yeah, basically the whole chapter is in this one page. Seluruh bab ada dalam slide ni dah. Okay, but of course there are detail there lah. There is in detail. Okay, so this just a refresh. So first thing we start is sine rule. Okay, pertua sinus. We follow the textbook, lah, guys. How they arrange? Okay, sine rule. So we go into deep the sine rule. Okay. So first thing, let me think, ah. Huh? Hmm. Okay. Guys, the triangle we discuss here. Segi tiga yang kita bincangkan kat sini. Apa jenis segi tiga dia? What is the type of triangle in this chapter? Is it right angle triangle? Adakah dia segi tiga sudut tegak? Very good. No. This one is your max. Okay, yang ini kamu belajar matematik modern. But at maths level up. Okay, satu awas lebih tinggi. Scaling triangle. All of these don't have the same side. Semua ada panjang sisi berbeza, different length of side. Okay, this is where we use sine rule, pertua sinus. Okay, because bukan semua segi tiga dalam dunia ni adalah segi tiga sudut tegak. Am I right? Not all triangles in the world are right angle. Dia boleh juga ada segi tiga macam ni. Di mana? Panjang setiap sisi adalah berbeza. The length of each side is different. Okay, so guys, keyword in sine rule. Bila nampak pertua sinus, what is the keyword that you always learn to identify sine rule? Apa keyword dia kata kunci in sine rule? Anyone know? Two side. Ah, uh, no. The keyword is actually opposite. Opposite. Side and angle. Maksudnya sisi dan sudut bertentangan. This is how you identify sine rule. Cara nak kenal pasti pertua sinus. Okay, dia kena sisi dan sudut yang bertentangan. Later I'll show you all. Okay, this the keyword. Okay, so guys, can anyone tell me untuk guna pertua sinus ni to use the sine rule? What is the minimum requirement we must have? Apa syarat minima yang kita kena ada? Atau apa info yang kita kena ada? Kalau nak guna pertua ni, what is the minimum? Yes, two side length sama one angle. Very good. Okay, kamu boleh wujud formula lah untuk jawab soalan ni. Just refer formula one angle or atau two angle one side length. Yang ni pun boleh. Okay, dua sudut satu sisi ataupun dua sisi satu sudut. Kamu boleh guna pertua sinus. Okay, this one is to find. 
the angle lah. Yang ni yang pertama adalah untuk cari satu lagi sudut. Yang kedua pula adalah untuk cari satu lagi sisi. To find another side. Okay guys. Are you clear on this? This is the minimum ah, requirement. Because kadang-kadang orang confused. Nak guna petua sinus ke? Nak guna petua cosinus? Okay, sometimes you all will have this doubt. Should I use sine rule to solve or should I use cosine rule to solve? So how to know which one to use? Refer to this. Okay, guna konsep ni. Okay, actually in a way both boleh guna lah. Kamu boleh aplikasikan dua-dua dalam satu soalan. Also can, no problem. Depend on the information yang mereka bagi. Kalau kekurangan info kat sesuatu, you apply the other rule lah. Okay, something like that. Alright, so now I show you how to apply sine rule. Okay, simple saja. Just focus on this triangle. Let's say A, B, C. Okay guys, siapa boleh bagi saya label bagi panjang A, B? What is the labeling I should put for the length A, B? Yes, C. Okay, opposite. Okay, A and B, sudut dia maksudnya panjang dia C. Okay, so can you see sudut C dengan C, 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 dia adalah bertentangan. The angle C and the side C are opposite to each other. Okay, so how about this one guys? What label should I put here? Apa saya kena letak? Yes, A. Alright, so can you see that A and A are opposite? Dia bertentangan, sudut dan sisi dia. And the final one, what should I put here? Yes, B. So can you see that B and B are opposite? Dia adalah bertentangan. So this is the concept of sine rule. Okay, sangat senang. Very simple. Alright, this is how they get the formula lah for sine rule. Okay. So, until now guys, any question? Apa-apa soalan nak tanya? Or all clear? Everything crystal clear? Okay, huh? so if no question, I continue. So, let me see. Mm, okay guys, one more thing you all must remember lah. Let's say lah, one time the question tell you in the instruction. Soalan bagi kat arahan, BAC tu adalah sudut cakar. BAC is obtuse angle. So guys, if I get an answer, BAC is 68 degree. Adakah ni betul? Let's say I suddenly get BAC 68. Yes, use 180 minus. Selalu ingat. Okay. If you want to find BAC yang cakar punya, the obtuse, just take 180 minus answer. Okay. Jawapan yang kamu kira guna petua sinus, the answer you get through sine will give you this one. Dia bagi jawapan ni. Tapi kamu kena cerdik. Soalan bagi tahu dah. Sudut cakar, obtuse angle. So, 68 bukan sudut cakar. So, 180 minus answer. So, 112 guys, is 112 obtuse? Yes. 112 adalah sudut cakar. Maksudnya yang ni lah yang betul. Okay, the others is wrong. Alright, so guys, why can I use 180 minus answer? Mengapa boleh guna konsep tu? Can anyone give me a reason? Why 180 minus? Mengapa bukan 360 minus? Mengapa 180 minus? Anyone? Everything that you do in maths, kamu kena fikir sebab. There is always a reason. Yes, okay, good point. Correct, I accept. Chaka is 90 to 180. Yes, correct. Triangle, yes, correct. It means 180 degree. And one more point. Guys, do you realize? Cuba tekan calculator kamu. Try to press these two value. Are they equal? Adakah mereka sama? Yes. If you press sine 68 in your calculator, kamu akan dapat nilai in, ini. Sine 68. So if you try with sine 112, adakah nilai dia sama guys? It's totally the same. Am I right? Itu sebab saya guna konsep 180 tolak. Okay, because both angle, kedua-dua sudut 68 dan 112 will give you the same value. Okay, that's why we have to follow the arahan soalan lah. It is sudut cakar. That's why kita tolak 68. 68 is rejected. 112 is accepted. Okay, sudut cakar sahaja boleh diterima. Okay guys, common question lah. Soalan sangat famous. They like to ask this also. Alright? So next one lah. Okay, so we done this one already. Sign rule, basically macam ni lah. This is the basic concept. Okay, so now... I want to talk about ambiguous case, case by ambiguity. Okay, guys, this one you all confused, I know. So, I will show you one example to make you all understand this thing. Katakanlah, you have a segi tiga like this. 
So guys, can I ask you, does ambiguous case exist in this triangle? Adakah case ambiguity wujud dalam segi tiga ini? Ya atau tidak? Does it exist? Everyone here? Yes or no? Try to think and see. Does ambiguous case exist? Adakah case ambiguity wujud? Yes. Okay. Can you see over here? Kamu boleh lukis satu lagi segi tiga. You can draw another triangle. Ambiguous case basically mean, if you understand the word ambiguous lah. Guys, what is the meaning of ambiguous? Apa maksud ambiguity? If you all, your English very pro, what is ambiguous? Yeah, correct, correct. But in, I'm talking English now. What is the meaning of ambiguous? Yes, cabo is blur. Or you can say curiga. Okay, curious a bit. Okay? So it's not clear. That's why this is called ambiguous lah. Because you can see that you have two triangles. Kamu ada dua segi tiga kecil dalam satu segi tiga besar. You have two small triangles in one large triangle. So this will come under ambiguous case. Okay, so where is the ambiguous case triangle, guys? Yang mana adalah segi tiga ambiguity? Satu atau dua? Which one? Is it number one or two ambiguous? Mana satu? Kalau mereka suruh lakar lah, adakah kamu akan lakar nombor satu atau nombor dua? Yes, nombor dua. Correct. Not number one now, guys. Number one is the Ori triangle. Okay, number two is the ambiguous one. Okay, don't confuse, huh? You must draw only the number two, this one. Number one, don't draw. Number one, for the understanding. Yes, take the sudut chaka punya. You can see over here, guys. Kat sini, dia adalah sudut chaka. This is obtuse. Based on my diagram lah, skala dia. The scale show is obtuse. Okay, jadi guys, kat sini, kita akan label apa? What symbol should we label down there? Eh, bukan C prime. Anyone else? Yes, B prime. Very good. Jawapan dia B prime. Okay, why B prime, guys? Apa dah ada kah dua dua sudut ah uh, CC ni sama? Is the length of AB and AB prime the same? Yes, it's the same. Dia sama sebab dia adalah segi tiga ah uh, sama kaki isosceles triangle. Okay, this is how ambiguous case form. Always remember, ah uh, guys, ambiguous case always try to form isosceles triangle. This is the main concept. Dalam kes ambiguity, kamu kena cuba cari satu segi tiga sama kaki dalam segi tiga yang besar ni. Always 90% of the time is isosceles. Mereka nak uji kamu konsep ni. Okay, 90% of the time. Okay, so ingat konsep ni. Isosceles triangle. Alright? So katakanlah, sudut kat sini A. Saya bagi huruf kat kamu. The angle is A. So what is this angle guys? Yang besar ni. What is the expression for the angle yang lebih besar tu? Apa ungkapan dia? Sudut caka tu, the obtuse angle. We should get 180 minus A. Am I right? Sebab BC adalah garis lurus. It's a straight line. Okay, that's why 180 minus A. Okay, ini adalah konsep dia lah untuk cari ambiguity ni. Alright, and one more thing you all might think. Mungkin soalan ni timbul dalam uh, minda kamu lah. Adakah kita perlu lukis segi tiga ni menggunakan ukuran yang sebenar? So what is your answer guys? Yes or no? Ya, yeah, tak perlu. No. Tak perlu guna pembaris ukur setiap sisi dan lukis segi tiga ambiguity. Tak perlu. As long as it's logic. Kalau nampak logic, maksudnya betul. Okay, remember. Tak perlu ukur satu per satu. Bazir masa saja. Don't need to do until like that. Okay, as long everything is logic. Sudut also tak perlu ukur. Okay, angle also don't need to measure. Just draw only. As long as it's reasonable. Dia nampak logic pada mata pemeriksa. Alright, so make sure. Huh? This one, the measurement includes side and angle. Dia termasuk CC dan sudut. So tak perlu. Alright, so this one or another question lah they will ask. Okay, so guys, are you clear with ambiguous case? Adakah kamu sudah uh, jelas sekarang about case by ambiguity? Any question? 
no question ah ambiguous case macam ni saja very short sangat pendek okay no so now if no we go on lah cosine rule okay yeah cosine rule pertua cosinus okay so now uh, formula dia ada tiga lah macam ni sebenarnya there is three formula actually for cosine rule kalau kamu wujud buku teks if you follow textbook textbook will show you these three formula Am I right guys? Dia akan tunjuk rumus macam ni kan? Ada tiga rumus macam ni. But guys, do I need to memorize all these three formula? Adakah saya perlu hafal tiga-tiga ni? Yes or no? Ya, yeah, no need. Tak perlu. Sebab semua ni bentuk dia sama. It's exactly the same formula. Just that they change the symbol only. Okay, kat tengah-tengah. Exactly the same. Alright? So, tak perlu risau. Okay? So, very simple. Uh, saya lukis wajahlah untuk bagi kamu faham Ok, but first thing Kalau kita nak cari sudut lah Usually they'll ask you to find the angle Am I right? From the cosine rule formula that you draw Mereka akan suruh cari satu sudut They'll give you to find an angle Ok, so guys, can you all tell me what is the expression for this? Kalau saya guna rumus ni lah If I use the first formula Macam mana nak saya ungkapkan cos A? How should I express cos A? Based on the formula If your algebra good lah, you can tell me the answer. Guna algebra saja. A square minus B square minus C square divide. Eh? Is divide ah? Kish. Negative 2BC combined with. Yeah, okay, good. You are thinking careless only. Okay, so you should get A square minus B square minus C square divide negative 2B. C. Okay guys, do you know how you get this? Yang ni, the one I circle here, pindah ke bawah because divide. To negative 2BC punya ungkapan dan cos A punya ungkapan dia gabung. Hubungan dia darab. The relationship in the middle is times. That's why pindah ke sebelah jadi bahagi. Okay, so this is the general formula to find angle lah, rumus am. Okay, kalau nak cari A ni, kamu cos inverse sahajalah seluruh yang ni. Okay, cos inverse the answer, you get the A angle. Alright? So, this is the general thing lah. Now, we go on to how to apply the cosine rule. Macam mana nak guna pertua cosinus? I use back the same triangle. Okay? Tadi kamu dah katakan all this length. Okay. So, guys, katakanlah soalan suruh cari panjang BC. The question now ask me, find the length of BC. Okay, guys? Very simple. I teach using the stick man. Guys, lukis satu orang kayu. Draw a stick man. Untuk faham rumus cosinus. To understand cosine rule formula, draw a stick man. Why I say draw a stick man? A square is your question. A square adalah soalan. Kamu nak cari nilai A. Am I right? So A square is B square minus, eh, sorry, plus C square minus 2B C cos A. Can you see the relationship guys? Kamu boleh nampak hubungan tak? Macam mana segi, macam mana orang kayu tu letak? Dia macam kaki orang kayu tu cabang. Jadi segi, segi tiga. The leg of the stick man branch out to form the triangle. Okay, so you always draw the stick man. Bila kamu confuse apa rumus cosinus. Okay, draw the stick man. Then you'll understand. This is A angle lah. Sudut A. Alright, so are you clear on this? Boleh faham? Okay, yeah. so now I want to ask you all, minimum requirement, syarat kelayakan untuk guna pertua cosinus. What are the minimum information I should have? Apa info yang saya perlu ada kalau nak aplikasikan pertua cosinus ni? Can anyone tell me? Berapa sudut, berapa sisi? Anyone? Answer? What's the minimum requirement? Syarat minimum to apply cosine rule? Hello? Answer please. 
If you refer to the formula, kalau kamu nampak rumus ni, what is the minimum requirement? Syarat minimum dia. Two opposite sides, angle between, correct? Two side, one angle. Okay, you can see it's almost the same with sine rule. Dia agak sama dengan pertua sinus. Yang ni kalau kamu nak cari uh, satu sisi. You want to find one side. Okay, because in your formula, dalam rumus cosinus, kamu ada tiga sisi dan satu sudut. You have three side, one angle. Okay, so if you have two side and one, one angle, kalau soalan dah bagi info, dua sisi, satu sudut, kamu kena cari satu lagi sudut lah yang bagi. Eh, sorry, satu lagi sisi yang bagi. Okay, one remaining side. Okay, or, atau, maybe they give you three side. Mereka bagi tiga sisi kat kamu, zero angle. So, kamu kena cari sudut tu lah. You must find the one angle. Okay, guna pertua cosinus. Atau, they can give you one side. Oh, cannot, cannot. Satu, uh, cannot. Okay, correct. Yang ni sahaja possibility dia. Okay? Macam ni sahaja. Apa-apa kurang kat sini, you cannot use cosine rule. Okay, ini adalah syarat kelayakan minima. The minimum requirement needed. Okay? So, this is cosine rule lah, basically. Ini cara dia. Okay, guys? Are you clear? Cosine rule? Any question? Apa-apa soalan on cosine rule? I know some of you might be asking, uh, macam mana nak buktikan rumus ni? How to prove this formula? Am I right guys? Kamu semua berminat tak? Macam mana nak tahu rumus ni datang macam mana? How you get this formula? Anyone here interested? Interested ah? Okay. Yang tu, kamu tunggu untuk sesi buktikan formula saya. Okay, saya akan create satu kelas sebelum NMATS SPM kamu before your NMATS exam to do proving formula saja untuk semua soalan buktikan rumus form 4, form 5. Okay guys, before your NMATS SPM lah, maksudnya selepas exam matematik kamu lah after your maths exam. Okay, masa CNY kot, during Chinese New Year time, I will put a class. Okay guys, hanya bincang pasal buktikan formula. All on proving formula, form 4 and form 5. Okay, so all na, nanti kita bincang lah. Okay. Because I rasa banyak lemah kat soalan buktikan, especially at maths. Okay, proving question is a big problem in at maths. That's why saya nak bincang semua, one shot. Okay, so yeah, this is all on cosine rule lah. So next, area of triangle. Macam mana nak cari luas segi tiga? Okay, saya guna balik segi tiga sama saja, the same triangle. So guys, can I use half base times height to count the area of triangle over here? Adakah saya boleh guna setengah kali tapak kali tinggi rumus ni untuk segi tiga macam ni? Yeah, you can use. Okay, kamu boleh guna tapi kena ada syarat. You have to have a condition that you know this length. Kamu kena tahu panjang ataupun tinggi segitiga tu. You must have the info of the height of the triangle. Maksudnya, kamu kena tahu yang ni panjang dia berapa, tapak berapa. You must know the length of the base. Okay? Sepatutnya lah, dua-dua ni kena sama sisi. It should be the same distance. Okay? Untuk height, untuk panjang yang tu. Sebab dia adalah berserenjang, perpendicular. Okay? So, ada beberapa info kamu kena ada lah. Baru boleh guna yang ni. Alright, so guys, one more thing ah, if you cuba banyak soalan, kalau soalan nak suruh kamu cari tinggi, what is the keyword the question will tell you? If the question want you to find height, especially in this chapter, apa keyword soalan akan bagi tahu? Anyone know? When the question asks you to find the height of a triangle, they won't say find the height, mereka akan cakap dalam bahasa lain. Anyone know? Katakanlah. Vertex dia macam ni, A, B, C. Anyone know? No one ah? Okay, so I tell you ah, the keyword ah, remember ah guys, very good Ain. Sangat bagus. Panjang terpendek, remember guys, shortest distance. Shortest distance selalu merujuk kepada tinggi, remember. Okay, famous question dalam penyelesaian segitiga. Shortest distance. 
shortest distance dari mana ke mana A kepada BC lah from A to BC the shortest distance panjang terpendek is a fa is a fakta lah fact it is the height ketinggian dia okey macam mana kamu boleh tahu kamu boleh nampak lah guys kalau saya lukis garis yang ni guys is it the shortest distance yang saya bold tu is that the shortest distance yang saya boleh dapat bukan kan that is not the shortest distance yang ni adalah yang paling terpendek kalau kamu nampak Okay, that is the shortest distance. Itu sebab yang tu adalah tinggi lah. That is the height of the triangle. Okay guys, jadi kamu kena ada luas dulu lah. Kalau kamu ada luas, you have the area of the triangle, baru kamu boleh cari ketinggian segitiga. You must have area. Then you can find the height. So macam mana dapat area ni guys? Macam mana dapat uh, luas segitiga tu? Half AB sin C lah. Kamu guna rumus ni. Half AB sin C. Okay, baru kamu boleh cari uh, panjang terpendek, shortest distance. Okay guys, so clear? Huh? Okay, so guys, I explain to you again how to remember the formula very easy. Macam mana nak ingat rumus ni sangat mudah. Again, katakanlah dia bagi sudut C kat kamu. They given you the angle C. So again, lukis orang kayu ni. Draw the stick man. Okay, stigma dia, konsep dia sangat penting. So, area equal to half. Half mengapa guys? Sebab bila kira segi tiga memang kena ada setengah. Okay, whenever you count triangle, there always is a half in the formula. Okay, so half apa guys? This is A. And then, eh sorry, this is B. This is A. This is C. Okay, so half equal stigma. Follow the this thing. A. And then, Follow again the stigman kaki dia ikut B. And then where is the stigman? Kan mana dua-dua kaki tu? Apa sudut yang di, uh, di apa nak kata? Cover lah by the two and uh, two side dua sisi tu sin C. Okay, angle C is the angle between the two kaki of the stigman A and B. Okay guys, can you understand? Macam mana nak lukis orang kayu ni? This the simple concept. Okay, half A, B, sin C. Okay, guys. So, guys, I want to ask you all. What is the minimum requirement over here? Apa syarat minima untuk guna rumus ni? Can anyone tell me? Sangat mudah saja. Kalau saya nak cari luas. Yes, two side, one angle. Kamu kena ada dua sisi, satu sudut. Kalau kamu lihat formula, kamu tahulah kenapa. Okay, you must have two side, one angle. Remember. Okay, dua sisi, satu sudut. Then you can find the area. Alright, so now guys, how if? Now here comes the interesting part. Bukan semua soalan dalam penyelesaian segitiga kamu kena ingat. Bukan semua adalah 2D. Okay, not all the questions are in two dimension. Setengah soalan akan ada dalam 3D. Three dimension. Okay, so guys, remember area... Kalau nak kira luas, terutamanya bentuk 3D dalam bab ni. In this chapter, area, 3D shape. Do we use half AB sin C guys anymore? Adakah kita masih guna setengah AB sin C untuk cari luas? Yes, you can still use. Kamu masih boleh guna. Tapi, you must have the angle. Dan untuk cari sudut tu dalam 3D agak susah. Okay, in 3D shape, if you want to find an angle, it's quite difficult. Okay, sebab pandangan dia akan terhalang. Your vision will be blocked because it's 3D. Okay, jadi susah nak dapat info yang ni. Kamu boleh dapat dua ni dengan mudah. You can find uh, tedious. I will say tedious. Okay, langkah dia sangat panjang. So, mathematician, ahli matematik create another formula yang hanya melibatkan sisi sahaja. Minimum requirement, three side only. Tak perlu sudut untuk kira luas segi tiga. What is the name guys? Ya, yeah, you'll hilang sabar. And it waste time. Dia bazir masa. Kamu ada masa singkat kan? Two hours only. Eh, two hours 30 minute. Paper two, right? Kertas dua. At maths. So, kalau kamu nak bazir banyak masa kat situ, tak, tak, what to say? It don't give you return lah. Dia tak bawa apa-apa faedah. Okay guys, can anyone tell me what's the name of this formula? 
where the minimum requirement is 3 cc yes wumus heaven remember these guys wumus ni sangat membantu bila terutamanya bentuk 3d sebab kamu tak ada sudut or it's difficult to find the angle dia susah okay so heaven's formula s sama dengan a tambah b tambah c bahagi 2 you have to find the s first kamu kena cari nilai s what is s semi perimeter maksudnya perimeter kamu bahagi 2 kamu dapat semi perimeter okay so the area formula itself untuk cari luas dia apa okay a is equal to square root ah kena ada punca kuasa 2 nampak macam kompleks tapi senang nak guna saja Okay guys, so this is the formula, rumus heaven. Alright, so yeah, yang ni sangat berguna lah untuk 3D. This is very useful for 3D shape. Okay, nanti kamu akan nampak contoh soalan lah yang saya bagi. Okay, we will discuss many questions. Alright guys, so until here, are you all clear? Boleh faham? And also one more thing lah guys, wait lah. Kadang-kadang ah, you kamu akan nampak soalan pasal bearing. Am I right, guys? Solution of triangle bearing. Have you all seen this kind of question? Penyelesaian segitiga yang menyebabkan bearing. Kebat also. Anyone seen this kind of question? Siapa-siapa pernah nampak? Ya, yeah, jarang. Okay, so my advice lah. Bila nampak saja bearing ni, don't do solution of triangle. Okay, jangan buat bila kamu nampak perkataan bearing. Okay, because it is a bit confusing. Dia sedikit masalah. Why I say that guys? Kalau kamu tanya abang kakak kamu lah yang senior-senior, bila sebelum tukar syllabus, your brother and sister in KBSM syllabus, there is one topic in mathematic called bearing. Tapi sekarang mereka dah bawa keluar. Okay, bearing is one of the topic in maths. Itu sebab mereka include dalam ad maths bearing. Dalam penyelesaian segitiga ni. Sebab kamu dah belajar dalam maths. For, but for you all, kamu semua KSSM. So KSSM, yeah. You never learn bearing. That's why you ask what is that. Kamu tak pernah belajar bearing. Okay, bearing you all learn in geography. Am I right? Kat form... Form 1 sampai form 3 saya tak ingat lah. Geography kamu semua belajar bearing. Okay. ah Form 1. So bearing tu datang dari matematik. Mereka bawa keluar dah. It is already taken out of math syllabus. Yang matematik biasa lah. Tapi mereka masih ada soalan. There is still question in ad maths about bearing. So my advice lah, jangan buat yang tu. Because you all never learn. Kamu tak belajar. Okay? Dia boleh tanya tau sebab dia ada dalam buku teks. Kat sini. I see some question in textbook KSSM ah Ada soalan bearing. So means that mereka boleh tanya dalam SPM. So that's why I say the backup chapter is important. Kalau penyelesaian segitiga tu susah, if solution of triangle difficult, you have to think of satu backup soalan. Selain nombor index, beside index number, maybe linear programming lah, ketaksamaan linear kamu. Okay, that's why I feel like I want to teach that chapter so lah, to all, just to recall macam mana nak buat. Okay, in case bab ni susah. Alright, so until here guys, are you all clear? Boleh faham? We already complete the chapter. Kita dah pergi, go to semua dah. Now it's only question. Soalan saja. Okay guys. So are you ready for the question? Semua soalan ni bukan basic-basic tau. Saya pilih semua sengaja bentuk 3D. All the question I have is 3D diagram. Sebab 3D tu susah. Okay, I put all the tough one. Okay, but the first one quite easy lah. Okay, yang mula-mula senang. Okay, so we see the question ah. Triangular piece of land. Okay, bentuk land dia segi tiga. And then they say that dua sisi dia adalah this one. They give you info. Lepas tu mereka bagi tahu sudut. Okay guys, very simple. Two side, one angle. Rumus apa kena guna? Kamu ada dua sisi, satu sudut. Anyone? What formula? Yes, very good. Setengah A, B, sin C. That's why I say kamu kena hafal syarat minima yang kena ada. You must know what is the minimum info you must have. 
So setengah AB sin C ni sama dengan apa guys? Equal to Ya, yeah, luas. Okay, the area of the triangle. Luas mereka dah bagi kat kamu. 1700. So, if you cannot uh, imagine, kamu boleh lukis lah. Triangle, 30 degree. Yang ni 2x plus 10. This one is 5x minus 20. Okay, sekarang you must find your x value lah. Kamu kena cari nilai x. Okay, baru kamu boleh tahu. The length of both sides. Mereka nak suruh kamu cari yang ni. Apa panjang yang ni? What is the length of 2x plus 10 and what is the length of 5x minus 20? Okay, but you must know your x lah. Okay guys? So basically, kamu gantikan saja. Just substitute all the info you have. Half 2x plus 10, 5x minus uh, 20, sine 30, equal to 1700. Zero, zero. From there, kamu cari nilai X. Okay, guys, you will realize ah, kalau kamu cuba selesaikan yang ni lah, kamu akan dapat quadratic equation. You should get quadratic equation. Oh, kamu tahu ah, Andy? Ah, betul, soalan Kelantan, kertas 1. Correct. Okay, quadratic. Alright, so guys, if you see here lah, Ah, ya, yeah, ya, yeah, ya, yeah, correct. You will get this equation. Bila kamu selesaikanlah semua ni. All of this is algebra. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Do you guys want me to discuss that paper? Kamu nak saya bincang Kelantan ke nanti? Sebelum exam at max. Okay, because they say Kelantan quite hard. Saya plan discuss Kelantan, MRSM. Eh, bukan MRSM. MRSM already discuss. Kelantan, SBP for at max. Okay, so far lah. Pasti ada lagi. Sebab dua-dua ni susah. Kelantan dan SBP. <laughs> ah, I will solve the debate lah. Wait, how can call people like that? Jangan. Why you call him like that? Oh, you call them? You mean the mangkuk question or he is mangkuk? <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Amin. Okay guys, if you see this equation ah, kalau kamu nampak lah persamaan ni, can I direct solve to get the x? Boleh tak saya direct faktorkan secara mudah dan dapat nilai x? Can I do simple factorization? Everyone here? Kalau kamu tekan calculator lah. Ya, yeah, guna rumus. You must use quadratic formula. Okay, sebab kamu tak boleh faktorkan. So guys, you see ya. Ah, Chapter 9, they are gabung dengan chapter 2 at maths. So you can see here, all the chapter dia adalah berkait. They can combine two chapter knowledge dalam satu soalan. Yang ni adalah chapter 9 punya knowledge. Solution of triangle, penyelesaian segi tiga. Yang bawah ni semua, dia adalah chapter 2 knowledge. Macam mana kamu apply rumus kuadratik to get your answer. Okay, panjang lah. It's a bit long, tapi kamu boleh dapat jawapan. Kalau kamu hati-hati buat lah. Okay, but make sure nilai negatif you reject. Okay, kamu tolak nilai negatif. Why? Because panjang tak boleh negatif. Length is always positive. So, yang ni kamu terima. Okay, why I round off here guys? Mengapa saya bundarkan kat sini? Because soalan bagi tahu nearest integer. Integer terdekat. Maksudnya, dia tak boleh ada perpuluhan. No decimal allowed. Okay, kalau kamu bagi perpuluhan, salah. Okay, although your answer correct, still salah because you never follow the arahan. Okay, so then, kamu dapat dah, kamu gantikan. Dalam dua panjang ni, kamu boleh dapat jawapan. You will get the final answer. 62, 110. This is the final answer. Okay, guys. Are you clear with this question? Dia panjang, tapi konsep dia sangat senang. The concept is very simple, tapi jalan kira dia lah yang panjang. Okay, the working step dia banyak. Okay, ya. Yeah? So, I proceed next one. Okay, guys. This is the question. 3D that you all want to ask. Okay. Kelantan also. Ah, Andy, you know this question, right? Came out in Kelantan section C at maths. Hmm. Okay. So, this is the type of question, guys. Kalau soalan ni keluar lah dalam SPM kamu macam ni. I want to ask you guys lah. Adakah kamu akan berani untuk selesaikan soalan macam ni dalam pilihan? 
will you take the chance adakah kamu nak uh, apa nak kata rugikan 10 markah tu for me i won't answer lah saya takkan jawab soalan ni okay but since kita bincang tentang bab ni kita akan jawab lah but in the exam situation dalam situasi perperiksaan kamu ada pilihan kan so lebih baik kamu pilih soalan yang kurang risiko choose the question that is less risk Okay, jangan pilih soalan susah sebab kalau kamu rugi markah, rugilah kamu. It is just a waste for you because there is easier question yang kamu boleh score 10 markah ni. 10 mark in section C is precious tau guys. You must score 10 mark section C. Itu boleh bantu kamu untuk pass at max. Jangan pandang rendah terhadap 10 markah ni. It helps a lot. Okay, campur dengan markah paper 1 nanti juga. Okay, it will come up. Okay, markah akan naik bila score 10 mark. Okay, so never mind, we talk about this question. Okay guys, always remember lah, when 3D diagram ah, one of the main concept soalan nak uji kamu, satu konsep sangat penting soalan nak bawa kat kamu adalah segi tiga sudut tegak. Right angle triangle. Kamu kena cuba cari segi tiga sudut tegak daripada rajah 3D. You must try your best to find a right angle triangle from a 3D diagram. Okay, always. 90% of the time, soalan suka nak uji yang ni. Bila bentuk 3D keluar. Remember ah guys, 3D relate to this one. Okay, cari sebanyak mungkin. Try to find the max you can. Okay, because whenever k bar question come, remember this ah guys, from experience ah. Anytime k bar question come in ad maths, apa-apa bab. Asalkan soalan k bar datang. Always remember, think back about Pythagoras theorem. Selalu ingat balik theorem Pythagoras. Mereka suka uji banyak soalan kebat melibatkan ni. Apa-apa bab pun, pembezaan lah, differentiation, anything. Okay, always remember this. Kalau kamu tak tahu macam mana nak selesaikan satu soalan, if you don't know how to solve, think back of this one. Cuba fikir, mungkin soalan nak uji saya tentang ni tak? Ah, Kamu boleh dapat jawapan. Try to form a right angle triangle. Cuba bentukkan yang ni. Okay, so from here, kamu lihat soalan ni. Okay. So mereka bagi kat kamu EF14, FG10, CG8. Okay, I rasa mereka dah label semua. Okay, good. M is midpoint of AD. Okay, maksudnya kamu boleh letaklah simbol macam ni untuk bantu kamu. Okay, so can I ask you guys what is the length of AM? Apa panjang AM? Kalau kamu faham, ya, yeah, fine. Sebab 10 yang ni sama dengan 10 yang ni. is the same length. 10, 10. And then half of 10, you get 5. Okay, so MD is also 5 lah. Okay, so this is the first thing you all must analyze. Okay, alright? Ambil semua info dari, dari pada soalan dan catat pada raja. So that you don't get confused. Okay, so 5, 5. Okay, then you read the question. Cari FCM. Find the angle of FCM. Where is FCM? This one. Okay guys. Directly. Boleh tak saya cari terus FCM? Can I find directly the FCM angle? Yes or no? No. Because we lack info. Tak ada info yang secukupnya. So guys. What is the info I need to find now? Can you all tell me? Apa saya kena cari? FCMC. Very good. Okay, got one more. Satu lagi. You have to find another one. Satu lagi panjang. Which one? Anyone? Yes, FM. Kamu kena cari FM. Sebab segitiga yang kita fokus sekarang adalah yang ni. We focus on this triangle. Okay, so what rule are we using here guys? Apa petua kita sekarang? Tiga sisi, satu sudut. Apa dia? Three angle, one side. Eh, where got petua sign? Wrong. Three angle, three side, one angle. Huh? Haida, look back your question. They ask you find the angle. Mereka suho cari sudut. What rule are we using here? Three side, one angle. Anyone? Tiga sisi, satu sudut. Yes, cosinus, very good. Cosine rule. Ingat balik guys, formula. A square is B square. Plus C square minus 2BC cos A. ABC adalah tiga panjang kamu. ABC is your three side. 
A is your angle, sudut kamu. So, sudut nak cari yang ni, kamu kena cari yang ni semua dululah. You have to find this three length. So, how to find this three length, guys? Macam mana nak tahu panjang FC, MC, MF? How to find? Mereka tak bagi kat kamu? Yes, Pythagoras theorem. Very good. Okay, guys. Kalau kamu boleh nampak lah, this is a line angle. Sudut yang saya label tu adalah segi empat, segi sudut tegak. Okay, it's a right angle. Why? Because, guys, do you remember cuboid? Apa sudut dia setiap sisi? What is the length? I mean, what is the angle? 90 degree. Am I right? Setiap bucu. That's why over here is 90. Okay, maksudnya FC kamu punya panjang adalah square root 10 kuasa 2 tambah 8 kuasa 2. 10 square plus 8 square. Then you will get the answer. Okay, so how about MC guys? How to find MC length? Macam mana nak cari panjang MC? Anyone? Can type out the Pythagoras theorem for me? How it look like? Anyone? MC length. Panjang MC. Hello? Yes, 14 square plus 5 square. Don't sleep there, guys. Okay, 14 square plus 5 square. Okay, because these two length are the same. Alright, this one very simple. Saya tahu, sangat mudah. But now, how to find FM? Can anyone tell me? Macam mana nak tahu FM? Because I don't see a right angle triangle here. Saya tak boleh nampak segitiga uh, bersudut tegak kat sini. So, how? Uh, yes, so how should I draw the triangle? Macam mana saya boleh lukis uh, segi tiga untuk cari FM? How should I draw it? Can anyone describe? M then to F. A cannot, cannot. M, oh, M to H E then to F. Yes, correct. Okay, okay. So guys, this is what Andy say. This is the way you do it. 3D. This is why the triangle is 3D. Bentuk tiga di. What is this angle, guys? Over here. Berapa nilai sudut tu? Correct. 90 degree. So, kamu boleh guna theorem Pythagoras. Mengapa 90 darjah, guys? Satu sata dia melintang. Uh, ya, yeah, melintang lah. Horizontal. Satu sata dia bawah macam ni. You can imagine like this, guys. Ini adalah gambaran dia. So, guys. Apa sudut dia sekarang? Kamu boleh nampak dengan mudah. 90 degree. Am I right? Satu sata yang rata, flat surface. Satu sata yang uh, macam ni lah. Like this. Okay, one of the plane is like this. So, what is the angle in the middle here? 90. Dari sini ke sini, 90. So, that's why this one is 90. Do you guys get it? Kena bayangkan tau sikit guys. You must imagine a bit. Kalau imagination kamu tak bagus, susah. You must imagine in 3D. Okay? So now, apa panjang yang ni? Kamu boleh tahu lah dari sini. Okay? 8 cm. Okay? So how about this length? How to find this length ah guys? Panjang yang ni macam mana? How to find that length? Anyone? Yes, Pythagoras also. Maksudnya sekarang kamu guna dua kali Pythagoras. Can you see this triangle guys? Tak sad. Saya guna warna lain. This triangle, yang ni, yang hijau punya, the green one. Okay, sudut kat sini adalah 90 darjah, 90 degree. Okay, so yang ni 14. What is this length guys? Can anyone tell me? Yang saya label hijau tu, apa panjang dia? Anyone? Apa panjang dia? Yeah, 90 degree, correct. So what is the green length I label? What's the length? Uh, of course lah, it doesn't look like 90. That's why it's 3D. 3D ya guys, sudut dia takkan nampak macam 90 tapi dia 90. Okay, you must remember that. Okay, because it's in 3D, dia dalam 3D. So tak boleh nampak directly. Okay guys, what is this length? Can anyone tell me ya? Ya, yeah, correct. 5. Mengapa 5? 10? Bagi dua. is the midpoint. Dia titik tengah. Okay. Bila kamu panjangkan dari atas ke bawah yang ni, 
dia akan potong kat titik tengah. You will cut at the midpoint. Midpoint apa? EH. Seluruh garis ni. Okay, definitely will be the midpoint. Alright, so then macam mana nak cari yang ni? Kamu guna theorem Pythagoras. 14 square plus 5 square. Kamu dapat jawapan. Lepas tu kamu kena cari yang ni pula. Yang panjang ni. Okay, macam mana? 8 kuasa 2 tambah dengan punca kuasa 2. 14 kuasa 2 tambah 5 kuasa 2. Lepas tu punca kuasa 2 lagi sekali. Okay, sebab saya kena cari yang ni dulu. Yang ni misi pertama saya. My first objective is to find that one. Yang ni adalah misi kedua saya. Okay, you must find the bottom one, CC yang ada pada sudut, yang ada pada sata rata tu dulu. You must find the length on the flat surface, baru kamu cari sudut yang condong ni, the slanting one. Do you guys get me? Boleh faham? So, ini cara kita analisis. 3D. Okay, ada step dia sangat panjang tapi senang nak faham. Okay, step by step kamu buat pasti boleh dapat jawapan. Okay, so you have all the side lah. Kamu ada semua tiga ni sekarang. So, cari sudut ni tak ada masalah lah. Cosine rule. Petua cosinus saja. Okay, kamu boleh nampak lah kat sini. Okay, kamu boleh tunjuk semua ni dalam exam untuk bagi pemeriksa faham apa yang kamu buat sebenarnya. You can show all this. Okay guys? Satu per satu, you draw the triangle out so that easier for you to understand. Okay, kalau kamu selesaikan, you should get final answer is this one. Okay, so guys, one thing ah, uh, I want to ask you all, boleh tak saya gantikan perpuluhan dalam anak panah yang saya label? Can I substitute decimal value? Yes or no? Dalam anak panah yang saya label tu. Anyone? Ya, yeah, can use. You can substitute decimal. Boleh. Okay, tapi you must remember yang mana lebih tepat guys. Guna nilai third atau guna nilai perpuluhan. Which one is more accurate? Third value or decimal value? Yes, third. Why third? Because third dia akan bagi titik perpuluhan sampai infinity. It will give the decimal until the end. Tapi kalau kamu bundalkan tempat perpuluhan kamu, this final answer, Jawapan ni, it won't be so accurate. Dia tak sangat tepat dan dia akan berbeza dengan skema. It will be different than the scheme answer. Okay, scheme answer dia selalu guna nilai yang paling tepat. He use the exact value iaitu dalam third form. Jadi bila kamu key in dalam calculator, key in dalam bentuk third. Use third form. Don't use rounded off form. Jangan. Okay, you can see all my working guys. Cuba lihat ke atas. Semua saya tinggal dalam bentuk third. Everything is in third form. Okay, saya tak tulis dalam decimal. Alright? So, make sure lah kamu bagi macam ni untuk dapat sudut paling tepat. Okay, tak, tak boleh lagi tepat lah. Alright? So, clear lah guys. This one, quite long lah but berapa markah? Ah, empat markah. Four marks. Okay, so quite a lot lah this one. Okay, after that, bila solve part A, yang lain semua senang dah. The rest all easy already. But you must get the A correct first. So that's why I say guys, kalau A kamu ni salah, let's say lah you try to solve A, A ni salah. Lepas tu guys, yang bawah ni, apa akan jadi? What will happen? If A wrong, means that bahagian B dan C juga salah lah. So that's why I say, soalan ni dia high risk. Okay, risiko dia sangat tinggi. Sebab kalau ni salah, mungkin kamu dapat katakan dua markah lah kat sini. You get two mark. Tapi nilai ni jawapan akhir salah. The final value is wrong. So this one will be wrong, wrong. Semua maka pergi macam tu saja. So that's why I say, kalau kamu seorang yang berani, if you are a brave person, kamu cuba buat soalan ni. Dalam situasi exam lah saya cakap, okay, bila masa tak menyebelahi kamu. When time is not on your side, if you are brave, kamu buat yang ni. Tapi kalau kamu yang seorang yang nak play safe, okay, nak main selamat, kamu jawab soalan yang lain. Linear programming, index number. Confirm 10 mark. Okay guys, are you clear? So this is the technique lah I share with you all. Macam mana nak tahu soalan mana nak pilih. Which one to choose. Okay. So next one lah. So they ask you to find CMF. Okay. So how to find CMF guys? Mereka nak cari sudut ni sekarang. So what rule? Betul apa? Kamu ada semua panjang. Yes, sign rule. 
Okay, kamu boleh guna petua sinus. So, you will get Fc over sin Fmc sama dengan Fm over sin Mcf. Okay, this is the expression. Ungkapan yang kamu kena tulis. Okay, you can see over here. Uh, yang ni. Okay. Ini cara saya buat. Sini pun saya buat dalam bentuk set. I use insert form. Don't convert to decimal. Untuk dapat jawapan paling tepat. Okay guys. So any problem part B? I think should be no problem lah. Sangat mudah. Okay guys. Anyone got problem lah. This step to this step. Siapa-siapa ada masalah tak tahu nak cari sudut dari sini. Only shift sign kamu kena ingat. Shift sign dalam kalkulator kamu. Sign nilai ni. Okay, kamu boleh dapat jawapan. Okay, to get the angle lah. Okay, so this is for part B. Lepas tu, untuk C, area. So guys, area. Can anyone tell me? Nak cari luas segi tiga ni, what formula? Rumus apa? Anyone? Area of the triangle? Heaven, correct? Heaven you can use or another one? Satu lagi pilihan? Another option? Correct, half AB sin C. Dua-dua pun boleh guna kat sini. Mengapa? Heaven kita dah cari semua panjang tadi. Am I right? We know all the length already. So kamu boleh guna heaven. Okay, heaven minimum requirement is three length. Tiga CC. Half AB sin C, kamu dah cari sudut ni kan? You already found the answer dalam bahagian A. So, kamu guna yang tu, kamu ada dua sisi yang ni. Stickman, ingat balik guys. Orang kayu kamu. Okay, half AB sin C. Kamu boleh dapat jawapan juga. Okay, no problem. Sebatunya dua-dua ni bagi jawapan sama lah. It should, have, it should give the same answer. Mungkin ada sikit uh, perbezaan lah tapi tak sangat banyak. A little bit of difference is okay. Sebab decimal, we take perpuluhan tu. Okay guys, just now only I told you all. Shortest distance mean what guys? Nak cari apa? Jarak terdekat? Yes, hi, remember. Okay, ketinggian. So mereka nak M kepada CF. So CF ni apa guys? Panjang CF ni mewakili apa? What does this whole thing represent? Anyone? CF represent A, eh, not hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, guys, you must remember, istilah hypotenuse hanya boleh wujud, uh, wujud kalau kamu ada segi tiga sudut tegak saja. Hypotenuse can only exist in a right angle triangle. Adakah ni segi tiga sudut tegak, guys? Takkan, it is not a right angle triangle. So, there is no hypotenuse. Tak ada istilah hypotenuse kat sini. Okay guys, remember ah. So guys, can anyone tell me yang ni mewakili apa? Uh, because it's not right angle. So saya tak boleh bagi tahu dia hypotenuse. CFG is not right angle to angle. Oh, oh you mean CFG. Okay, okay, can, can. CF is hypo. Boleh, boleh. Tapi su... Bagi segi tiga ni lah. Okay, I'm referring to this. Dalam segi tiga ni yang saya lorekan, apa itu C, C, F? What is C, F? In the triangle I draw here. Apa kuantiti yang diwakili oleh C, F? Kalau saya nak selesaikan soalan D lah. If I want to solve part D. What is it? Adakah itu tapak? Adakah itu tinggi? Is it the base or the height? Anyone? CF ni. Adakah dia tapak atau tinggi? Ya, tapak is the base. Okay, mengapa? Yang ni adalah tinggi. Okay, soalan tanya jarak terpendek M kepada CF. The shortest distance of M to CF. So, shortest distance M to CF yang ni adalah tinggi. This the height. This is the base, tapak. Okay, guys. So, tadi kamu dah cari luas kan? You already found the area in part C. So, setengah base kali height sama dengan jawapan ni lah yang kamu dapat. Kamu boleh cari dah shortest distance. Ok, 
Okay, sangat mudah. Kamu boleh nampak kat sini. Okay, so ini cara kamu boleh buat. Okay, CF kamu dah carilah kat soalan A. You already found the CF length earlier itself. Okay, so then you can count for your X value. 14.34, final answer. Okay, guys. Is everyone clear? Hello? Everyone here? Semua jelas tak? Can you all respond? Clear, huh? I scared when you all silent over there, kamu tak tahu apa, apa sedang berlaku sekarang. Because soalan ni susah. It's 3D diagram. Okay, that's why I ask. And majority soalan tak, majority calon tak suka 3D. Okay, so another 3D. I ask you all here. Satu lagi 3D. Yang ni melibatkan ambiguity jugalah. Ambiguous case. Okay, Melaka trial 2023. Okay, so we try this ah. Huh? So they say that QT is 60 meter. TS, how far per bulan for the answer can be written? Mm, my advice is 4 DP, 4 titik per bulan. Jangan lebih daripada yang tu. Yes, 4 is max, 2 is minimum. Okay, dua, tiga, empat boleh lah. Satu jangan. Satu is very rare. Okay, sangat jarang. Okay, at least two DP. Sekurang-kurangnya dua DP. Selebih-lebihnya empat DP. Then we can then we can just use two lah for the answer. Ah, can also? No problem. Okay, can. Alright. So, yeah, we continue lah. So, TS is 80 meter. And then QS is 100 meter. Label everything. Okay. And then they say P is 90 meter vertically above T. PT adalah 90 meter. So now they ask you to find PS. Cari panjang PS. So guys, how to find PS? Macam mana nak cari PS? Guna. What do we use here? Sekarang segi tiga dia kat sini. We focus on this one. Is Pythagoras theorem. Kamu kena guna theorem Pythagoras. Mengapa? Right angle to angle. Segitiga sudut tegak. Jadi jawapan dia. Punca kuasa 2. 90 kuasa 2. Tambah 80 kuasa 2. Okay. Sebab PT tu 90. TS tu 80. Okay. So then you will get the answer. Yang ni untuk A1. PS. Alright. So yang ni soalan dia sedikit. Murah hati lah. The question a bit kind. Okay. Soalan yang sebenar dia takkan bagi bahagian ni. They won't give you this part. They will direct ask you this one as bahagian A. Empat malka. Okay. Mereka takkan pisahkan bagi kamu. They won't separate. Okay. Kalau soalan tu nak strict lah. If they want to be strict. Yang ni mereka dah bagi tunjuk aja dah kat kamu. The question already guide you to the answer. Untuk bahagian B. Okay. Tapi soalan sebenar mereka akan tanya yang ni terus. Tanpa yang ni. Without this one. Okay, so you must know lah. Untuk dua case yang berbeza, kamu kena tahu macam mana nak selesaikan. Okay. So now, mereka nak cari PQ. Okay guys, so how to find PQ? Anyone? Nak cari panjang PQ guna? This one. Sekarang fokus kat sini. So what do we use to find PQ? Anyone? What, uh, are we using sin rule? Adakah kita guna pertua sinus? Pertua cosinus? Anyone? Give your suggestion. How to find this? Macam mana nak cari PQ? I have PT is 90. TQ is 60. Eh, no lah. Not sin rule. Anyone else? Because we don't have any angle here. You tau. Kita tak ada sudut kat sini. No angle is given. So we cannot use sine rule. Okay. Does anyone know? Ah, sudut PTQ ni berapa? Can anyone tell me the angle PTQ is how much? Anyone? Yeah. 90. Correct. 90. Okay. Maybe some of you will be like, huh? How can it be 90? Because it don't look like 90. Am I right? Dia tak nampak. Macam 90 darjah. I think a lot of you will think like that. Okay. I can try to focus for you all lah. So that you all can see better. Okay guys. So why is it 90? You all must remember one thing. 
the diagram uh, is not drawn according to the scale. Okay, Raja tidak dilukis mengikut skala kecuali dinyatakan. Do you all see this instruction in the exam? Okay, the diagram is not drawn according to the scale unless stated. Okay, so means that kamu tak boleh anggap yang ni adalah sudut cakar. Hanya bila mereka bagi tahu itu adalah sudut cakar dalam arahan, then only is confirm 100%. Okay, kamu tak boleh anggap this one is obtuse. Okay, if you anggap this one is obtuse, wrong. Okay guys, do you understand now? Always remember, semua raja dalam admats tidak mengikut skala kecuali dinyatakan. It's not according to scale. Okay, so they can cheat you with the diagram also. Mereka boleh tipu kamu. Okay, because it is not according to scale. Dia tak mengikut skala. Okay, so this one is 90 lah basically. So why 90? So you try to think and see lah guys. Any other way I can find this angle if it is not 90? Can I ask you all? Adakah ada apa-apa cara, cara lain? Ya, tak ada. Means it's 90 only lah. The easiest angle to think of is 90. Because I cannot just assume a value. Let's say 120. Okay, tak boleh. There must be a certain proof. So the best proof is right angle triangle. Okay, and another keyword, pyramid. Usually lah, in a pyramid, the side is actually 90 degree. Okay, dalam bentuk pyramid. Sudut dia kat bawah tu is 90. Okay, this one of the fact lah that you all must know. Alright? So clear huh? Uh, Let me see, anything else? Mm, okay, nothing already. So PQ very simple lah now. You can find. Kamu boleh cari dengan mudah. Okay, again, guna theorem Pythagoras sahaja. Kamu boleh dapat jawapan. Okay, Andy, can you see ya? Andy, 2DP ya. Dua tempat perpuluhan. 2DP. Tempat, dua tempat perpuluhan. Okay, final answer. Okay, so leave it to 2DP is the best lah. Bagi pada dua tempat perpuluhan. Alright, so this is for A1, A2. And then B, calculate angle PSQ. So guys, anyone can give me suggestion? Macam mana cari PSQ? This is the PSQ. So how to find? Apa petua yang saya guna kat sini? What rule? I have this length. I have this length. And then, uh, saya ada panjang yang ni juga. So anyone? What rule is this? Yes, cosine rule. Correct. If you know how to identify the rule, sangat mudah. Kalau kamu boleh kenal pasti petua apa, uh, kamu boleh jawab dah. Sebab ganti nilai saja. Just substitute all the value. Okay, so you can see the working over here lah. It's like this. Okay, kamu kena buat macam ni. Okay, again, use all the cert form. Gantikan nilai dalam bentuk cert. Okay, jangan ganti perpuluhan. Don't substitute decimal. Because if you count with decimal, kamu akan dapat jawapan salah or inaccurate. Okay, tak tepat. Alright, so the tepat angle should be 57.89. Okay, guys, I think all this should be no problem lah. Tekan calculator saja. Anyone have problem to press calculator for cosine rule? Can you tell me? Siapa ada masalah tekan calculator untuk petua cosinus? Anyone? If no means I won't show. Huh? I assume your calculator skill semua bagus lah. Okay, sebab yang ni tekan saja Tak ada apa-apa konsep matematik. Okay ah guys. So I proceed only to the next one. Okay, so part C. Ah, question very kind. Soalan pun dah bagi tahu. Guna formula heaven. Okay, find the area of inclined wall. Okay, sata condong. So where is the sata condong guys? It is this one. This is the inclined wall. Okay, ini adalah sata condong. So guys, what is the first thing we must find in heaven? We call apa benda pertama kena cari bila guna formula heaven? Anyone? First thing. Yes, semi perimeter. Kamu kena cari semi perimeter dulu. Betul. Okay, then only guna rumus heaven untuk cari luas. Okay, semi perimeter sangat mudah. Kamu semua nilai ni dah ada. Okay, you have all the value. Lepas tu bagi dua. Baru ganti dalam formula. Lepas tu tekan calculator saja. Then you will get the answer. Alright, something like this lah. 
Untuk case macam ni lah guys, saya tak boleh dapat jawapan dalam cert. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm explaining to you guys. Got some more questions, so you try to listen and see. Got some more example for you all, 3D. Okay, kamu nampak semua bentuk, lepas tu clear dah. Okay, so if the question like this, kamu tak boleh bagi dalam bentuk cert kan, kamu cuba bagi tempat perbulan paling banyak. Give the most number of decimal you can. So, yang ni bukan jawapan akhir lagi. Jadi, masih boleh. As long as not the final answer, kamu boleh tulis lebih dari empat tempat perbuluan. Okay, tak ada masalah. Only final answer, don't give lebih. Okay, so kamu gantilah satu per satu. All the value. Tengok, nilai ni. Look at this value guys. I also use insert form. Saya guna dalam bentuk cert. Okay. I use that, that cert is not possible. Only point can get the most correct answer. Huh? Cert should give the most accurate answer. Lah. If decimal, you won't get the most accurate answer. Because rounded off already. Sudah dibundalkan. Cert is not yet dibundalkan. Oh yeah, sometimes some of the scheme lah. Mereka takkan bagi jawapan yang paling tepat. Okay, they will use the rounded off value. But no need to worry lah. Jawapan yang ni takkan lari sangat dari jawapan sebenar. It won't be so big different. Okay? Guys, I ask you all lah. Adakah dia lebih bagus untuk bagi jawapan yang paling tepat ataupun bagi jawapan yang kurang tepat? You all answer me. Is it better to give a very accurate answer or a less accurate answer? Everyone here. Yang mana lebih baik? I use cert, didn't get that. Huh? You try again and see. Key in the exact value, you know guys. Kamu kena key in tepat-tepat nilai tu. Pasti boleh dapat punya. Okay? Don't round off anywhere. anywhere. Dalam jalan kira, jangan bundalkan. Guna nilai dalam calculator kamu. Use your calculator value. Don't round off. Okay? Even in the middle of the working. Jangan bundalkan. Okay? Then you will get the answer. Okay guys? So make sure use... Okay lah, can. So I round off to... 5100. I think it's 5099.998. Am I right, Randy? Jadi saya tak boleh tulis lah macam ni. Ah, uh, What is it? Point what? What is the back number? Ah, uh, Correct lah. That's why saya round off to 5100. So that it look nicer lah. Dia nampak lebih cantik berbanding something like this. Okay guys, do you get my point? Okay, kalau nak, kamu boleh tulis yang ni dulu. If you want to write, kamu tulis yang ni, lepas tu sama dengan yang ni. Also can, masih boleh. Okay ya guys, so this is the point lah on the decimal thing. Alright? Oh, then can lah, you can write that answer. Can, kamu boleh tulis. Kalau macam tu, boleh. Alright? So now, this one, ambiguous case. So guys, PQS. Kalau kamu refer balik raja, how is the, am I, you all tell me, where is the ambiguous triangle? Can anyone tell me? Kamana segitiga ambiguity tu? Is it macam ni ataupun macam ni? Yang mana satu? A atau B? Uh, but then it really depends on the scheme lah. Dia amat bergantung apa nilai skema bagi. Okay, if the scheme give the less accurate answer, then gone lah. Kalau skema bagi jawapan paling tepat punya daripada calculator, then you will get the correct answer lah. Uh, that's why I say guys, if they ask question 3D, segi tiga, cuba elakkan. This my advice. Okay, when they ask 3D question on solution of triangle, cuba buat the others. Index, number, linear or programming. Okay? That's why I say avoid this kind of question. Okay, if 2D, tak ada masalah lah semua yang ni. Okay guys, come back here, come back here, focus balik. Which one is the ambiguous line guys? Yang mana adalah garis ambiguity? A atau B? Yang saya kena lukis. Everyone here. A? Yeah, correct. Okay, B is the correct answer. Mengapa guys? Why B is the answer? Sebab panjang PQ adalah lebih dari panjang PS. Eh, sorry, sorry. Panjang PS adalah lebih dari panjang PQ. 
Okay, PS is greater than the length of PQ. Okay, cuba bayangkan lah guys, logic. Kalau panjang PQ ni lebih kurang dari panjang PS, if PQ is less than the PS, can PQ, uh, eh sorry, can the PS go until like this? Kalau PS tu lebih panjang dari PQ lah, boleh tak saya shift dia sampai ke situ? Tak boleh kan? Definitely cannot sebab PQ dah lebih pendek dah. PS yang lebih panjang. Jadi PS bila dia gerak, dia akan lebihi panjang PQ dah. Okay, I know in the diagram, you all might think that PQ ni lebih panjang dari PS. Am I right? Kalau kamu lihat diagram ni secara terus, tanpa sebarang nilai. Okay, without any value visually, PQ look longer than PS. But again, kamu kena ingat, raja tidak dilukis mengikut skala kecuali dinyatakan. Okay, the diagram is not drawn according to scale. So, mungkin kamu nampak PQ lebih panjang dari PS. But actually, in reality, PS actually lebih panjang dari PQ. This is the reality. This is your observation, pemerhatian kamu. Do you guys understand me? Boleh faham? What is the point I trying to tell? Ah, so don't make assumptions. Jangan buat anggapan. Okay? Always use the count the value and find out. Okay? So actually you count already lah all these questions. So that's why you can get the answer for this one. Okay? Over here lah is something like this. Okay? Kamu kena lukis macam ni. Okay? So this is the ambiguous case. Actually lah to be right, kamu hanya perlu lukis yang ni. Yang kecil ni sahaja. But to make you all understand clearer macam mana dia terbentuk, saya lukis satu raja lah. But in exam, try not to draw this whole thing. Cuba jangan lukis sebulat-bulat macam ni. Lukis yang hijau sahaja. Cukup. Okay guys? So clear lah. So this is for C1. And then, untuk bahagian kedua, dia akan suruh kira lah. Cari sudut Q prime. Find the angle Q prime. So how to get Q prime? Kamu kena lihat balik raja lah. You follow back the diagram. Okay. Ini adalah sudut yang kamu kena cari. This one. So how to find that angle guys? Anyone? Macam mana saya boleh cari sudut hijau tu? What form, uh, what rule? Pertua apa? Uh, no, no, no. Not Pythagoras. Kami tak guna Pythagoras. Anyone else? Cuba lihat gambar besar guys. Try to see the big picture. The green one. Yang hijau punya. Okay, can you see that? Saya boleh cari sudut yang ni. Adakah kamu boleh nampak yang tu? Because saya ada dua sisi. I have two sides. Sudut ni, saya dah tahu. Okay, I already know that angle. Uh, eh, sorry, sorry. Saya dah tahu sudut ni. Okay, this red angle. Saya dah kira tadi. Am I right? You already found in part A, sudut tu adalah 57.89. Okay, just now I show you all yang tu. So what rule do we use here guys? Two side, one angle. Apa petua dia? Dua sisi, satu sudut. Eh, hey, where got? Yes, sign. Don't confuse ah guys. Kalau guna petua salah, salah ah. It's totally wrong. Okay? So this is sign rule. Okay? Because opposite dengan opposite, opposite dengan, eh sorry, opposite dah dengan opposite lah. Okay, correct. Okay guys, do you get me? Boleh faham? So now, bila dah dapat sudut tu, when you already count the angle, okay, you can find this angle. So can anyone tell? Dua-dua ni dia kena sama panjang, it must be the same. Okay, dia kena sudut dia sama. Maksudnya, sudut yang ni sama dengan sudut yang ni. The two weight angle are the same because panjang dia sama, same length. So, the green one, kamu hanya ambil 180 tolak dengan sudut PQ, Q prime. Okay, so this is the way lah. You can solve for P prime, Q prime, S prime. 180 minus PQ, Q prime. Okay, guys? So you can see over here lah, this how we do it. Okay, kamu guna pertua sinus dulu. Lepas tu, kamu guna konsep 180 tolak dengan sudut tu. Untuk dapat jawapan. 
Okay, guys. Any problem on this question? Ada apa-apa masalah? Atau tak ada? If no problem, I proceed. Huh? Let me see. Huh? Any nice question to discuss? Hmm. Uh, okay, this one we discussed already. Yang ni. Okay, maybe we discuss 2D lah, guys. Guys, kamu semua headache ah. C3D already. Everyone here. Do you feel pening already? C3D so long? Maybe I try to discuss 2D lah with you all since I never discussed 2D. <laughs> And maths is a headache lah. That's why. <laughs> okay, we go 2D now. Since kita tak bincang apa-apa pasal 2D, we do the last question on 2D lah. Okay, yang lain, the rest of the 3D, kamu semua go to. Okay, saya hantar selain ni dalam group. I will send it, then you all go to one by one. Any question, PM saya. Okay, kalau tak faham jalan kira saya. Okay, guys? You all must you have your own responsibility lah, guys. You all big already, am I right? So, kamu kena buat ulang kaji lah before your NMATS exam. Guna balik semua nota saya. Intensif. Semua nota dah ada dalam group. Okay, everything. Each chapter. Okay, semua jenis soalan ada kat situ. Okay, guys. So, now, they ask you find the length of AB. Cari panjang AB. Okay, so anyone can tell me how to find AB? AC, mereka bagi kat kamu 4.916. BC is 5.280, DE is 6.025. Mereka nak yang ni. So, how to find guys? Macam mana cari? Ya, yeah, cos lah. Correct. Pertua cosinus. Sebab, two side, one angle. Kamu nak cari yang ni. So, cosine rule. Pertua cosinus. Sangat mudah. Okay, ganti nilai saja. Just substitute all the value. Then you will get the answer for this one. Okay, you can see over here. Okay, make sure uh, guys, 3DP. Because soalan bagi tau beri jawapan dalam tiga tempat perpuluhan. Leave your answer to 3 decimal. Okay, make sure leave it to 3 decimal. Okay, then you will get the correct answer. Alright, so next one. Uh. So next one, mereka nak cari sudut DCE. Okay guys, how to find DCE? Can anyone tell me? Macam mana cari yang ni? What's the concept? Anyone? Yes, sine rule. Very good. Guna pertua sine. Mengapa guna pertua sine? Okay, you have the length of CD. Am I right? Kamu ada panjang... Tak nak? Pan... Eh, sorry. Kamu ada panjang DE. Okay, you have DE length. Kamu nak cari sudut ni. You want to find this angle. Okay, jadi kamu boleh guna start. Uh, kamu cari CED dulu. You find the CED angle. Kamu kena cari sudut ni. Okay, how to find this angle? Guys, I want to ask you all. Sudut ABC dengan sudut ECD. Adakah mereka sama? Is the angle ABC and ECD the same? Everyone here? A, B, C, C, E, D. Are they the same? Hello? Yes, they are the same. Okay, mereka adalah sama. Why is it the same? Because parallel line. Gave selari. Parallel line means the sudut will be the same. Okay? Soalan dah bagi tau. A, B is parallel to E, C. Alright? So, can you find C, E, D? Should be can lah. Because you know this one, you know this one. So, 180 minus ECD minus 44.89, kamu akan dapat sudut CED. Sepatutnya dapat 74.70. Okay, so this is the answer lah. So then, mereka suruh cari, uh, eh, sad lah. Sekarang kita buat A2 wait lah. Ah, DCE. Okay, DCE kita dah cari lah sebenarnya. Okay, we already find DCE. Okay, guys? Clear? Huh? So, now they want the area. Luas CDE. So, luas CDE how to find? What formula, guys? Luas half AB sin C. Okay, you have this angle. Kamu ada panjang yang ni. Kamu kena cari 
panjang yang ni. Okay, if you want to use this angle lah, kalau kamu nak guna sudut ni. Okay, you have to find the length of CD. Okay, so macam mana cari panjang CD? Pertua sinus. Use your sine rule. CD over sine CED equal to DE over sine ECD. Kamu boleh dapat jawapan. Okay, you will get the answer already of CD. Lepas tu setengah kali CD kali DE kali sine 44.89. Lukis orang kayu. Draw the stick man. Okay, then you will get the answer. Alright guys. So the working kamu boleh nampak lah kat sini. How I do. Okay, yang ni. Okay, all of this. Ini cara kamu nak selesaikan. Okay guys, are you clear? All this question? Okay ah. Huh? So I explained to you already. I think got, is it one more question? Yeah, got something at the bottom. Okay, last one. Ambiguous quiz. Then we end for this one. Okay, last two question. One more time ah. Huh? I teach you all ambiguous case. Kalau ada siapa-siapa masih confused. This is your last chance. Okay, so listen carefully. They say that CE equal to C prime E. So guys, I draw out again. Huh? Is this the ambiguous case line? Or is this the ambiguous case line? A atau B? Mana yang betul? Which one is the correct one? Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. I draw wrongly. Wait now, guys. Sorry. Is this the correct one? Or is this the correct one? A or B? Sorry, I asked wrong question just now. Yang mana adalah garis ambiguous yang betul? A atau B? CE sama dengan C prime E. So which one is the answer? Yes. B adalah jawapan. Yang ni adalah jawapan. Okay, sebab panjang CE lebih kurang dari panjang ED. Okay, the CE length is less than ED length. Itu sebab kamu boleh gerak yang ni ke sini. Jadi yang ni. Okay, kamu tak boleh gerak DE sebab DE lebih panjang dari CE. Okay, DE length is more than CE. So you cannot move the DE to the right. Okay, dia akan lebih dari panjang CE dah. Dia akan jadi lebih tinggi. Okay, so it's wrong. Okay, so this is how you should draw your answer lah. Macam ni. Kalau lukis macam ni. Dalam exam, kamu tak perlu lukis seluruh. Kamu hanya lukis yang ni. Just draw this one. Okay, cukup dah. Alright. Ah, uh, wait, wait, wait. You should draw this one. Sorry, bukan yang ni. Lukis yang ni. This one. The small one. Okay guys. Are you clear? Macam mana nak laka? This how you can sketch lah. But my advice, kamu guna pencil lah. Bila suruh laka, don't use pen. Okay, use pencil. Alright. So next, mereka suruh cari sudut. The last one. Okay, they ask you to find the length. Eh, sorry, ask you find the angle. Okay. Sudut yang mana? D, C prime E. Okay. So anyone can tell what's the concept? Macam mana cari sudut tu? This is your triangle now. Macam ni. C prime. These two are lah sama. So mereka nak cari sudut ni. So anyone? How to find it? Very good. 180 minus answer. 180 tolak jawapan. Jawapan apa? This one. Kamu ada sudut ni kan? You already found earlier. Yes, very good. Correct. Okay, that will be the answer. Then you already solve the question. Tangan mudah. Alright, but you must make sure your original answer betul lah. Then only your answer will be correct. Kalau asal salah, this one also salah. Alright, so this is how you do it. Okay, 180 minus answer saja. Then you will get the jawapan ahi. Okay, guys. So yeah, this is solution of triangle. So the rest you all go to ah, huh? satu per satu. I think few more question only left. The past two are based lah. Okay guys, so how you find today? Do you all understand better now? Solution of triangle, 3D. We already go to two question, I think. Two question and one 2D. Okay, so again, kalau nak. Popular kan saya lah, in other words. If you want to make me popular, if you find my teaching method good, you can always share my YouTube channel. Okay? And maybe give some feedback lah, like and subscribe, yes. Okay? 
on the way to become famous you hey why got this like <laughs> what is this ah now correct <laughs> ah andy why this like hey yo you guys ah and if anyone again one more thing ah if anyone want have junior want to join my class please recommend okay form four form five not only your life to teach okay the my class will start in march for the future batch lah Okay, so you can recommend to your friends also. Any form four, form five, going to take maths and maths. Okay, the future batch. Just share my YouTube channel only. Okay, so yeah, I think this is all lah for today. Okay.